Hey guys, welcome to part 9 of the survival series tutorials. Now, I know it's been quite a while as I always seem to say, but this time we're going to be getting into something fairly simple, fairly straightforward, but it will help you then go on to create something more substantial if you go on to edit it, or I might edit it in the future if enough people want it. So we're going to go to the basis of some fishing mechanics. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is we're going to make a cube. You need to imagine that this cube is an actual fish because I'm not going to bother modeling a fish because to represent this in code we'll just use a series of boxes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have one cube that's going to represent our fish and then we're going to have a series of other cubes which are going to class as our destinations. So if you ma imagine what a real life uh, fish would do it would just sort of swim around aimlessly towards different directions so that's what we're going to sort of allude to in this script it's going to be really simple and it's not going to be perfect because say you have a model where the fish's head is in a particular direction it's not going to turn that face to go into the direction that it's swimming it we're just going to show the basic concept of moving an object to different destinations randomly uh, depending on when it's moved to that said destination and then from there, we'll be able to press a button when we go close to our fish object and we'll be able to pick it up and it'll go into our inventory. So again, like I said, you could use things like a lerp to make um, the um, movement of the fish more smooth. You could maybe use a look at command so that you have the head always looking at the particular objects that it's moving to. As I say, I might go into it more detailed, but for the sake of this, I'll show you and then you can make it as advanced as you want. So... Sorry about that long intro. What we're going to do is we're going to create a um, game object, create other, and then I'm going to create a cube. And my cube is going to be just here. Sort of almost on where your sand might be or wherever you want. This is just to test it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually rename this and call it fish. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tag for this and we're going to call this fish as well because we're going to reference that in our scripts that we use so from there we'll make sure it's tagged so we've got a fish here pretend that's a fish I'll scale it down slightly so maybe then yeah look there now it looks like a fish <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to set a series of destinations for it to move to so what we're going to do is we're going to create another box which can be just place it anywhere can place it there and I'm going to name that dest1 for destination 1. Then what I'm going to do is going to go create and then I'm going to create an empty game object. We're going to call that destinations. It's just so that I can keep we can keep the scene nice and organized. I'll shove my stones from the other tutorial in my objects so we can keep it all nice. And then in destinations, we've got one object here. We'll duplicate it. We'll put it there. We'll maybe put that slightly higher. We'll want to rename that to destination 2 and so on for the amount of actual destinations you ever want your AI or fish to be moving to. So I'll add one more and I'll put it slightly higher and it's going to move between these four points. Now we're going to write a script which calculates or it's going to choose a particular object to move to. Um, at any one point so if it's move if your fish is just standing still it'll choose a point that it wants to move to and then it'll move to it and then if it's already moved to that point it'll find another random point and move to that one just sort of you get that random variation you can have as many cubes as you want but for the sake of this I'll just have four destinations so what we'll do is we'll right click and we'll create a new JavaScript file and we'll call this fish movement And then we'll open up Ivan will develop. So what we'll do to begin with is I'll delete the two starting functions that we've got. And I'm going to write variable target as type transform. And then what we need to do is add two square brackets and then a semicolon. And this is going to start our actual array that we're going to use. So an array holds um, an amount of objects that you specify within the inspector. So it's so it's a way so we don't have to write variable target one as type transform 
variable target to as type transform and so on for as many sort of movement destinations as we want so we're going to be able to specify it within one variable so it's a lot more neater and faster to use so then we're going to write another variable and we'll call this is moving and we'll set that as a boolean equal to false and so that's going to test whether we're actually the fish is going to be moving and then we're going to have a variable called speed and it has that of, of type float equal to 5.0 f now this is the speed at which your fish or your object will move so you can set that in the inspector depending on what you like then we're going to have one more private variable and we're going to call this new target and set that as type transform as well so what we're going to do is we're going to start off by writing function update two brackets then two curly brackets below so we need it in the update function because it's going to need to check every frame then we're going to say that if is moving is equal to false so we're saying that if our fish isn't moving we're going to have two curly brackets below then we're going to say that new target is equal to the targets that we've set inside a square bracket random dot range open up a normal bracket zero comma target dot length you need to make sure that the target is the same as you've set at the top here it's just that it changed it for me and then what we need to do is we need to add a bracket to encapsulate the other bracket that we started with and a square bracket to close up for our array so really what we're doing is these square brackets here and here are in reference to this these two brackets up here so we've got the target and we're specifying we're looking for a random range of zero between zero so that's the start of the array to the actual length of the array oh I spelled that wrong so that's going to make sure that our new target that we're going to look for is within this array of the variable target we're going to look for a random target between however many there is in there and then we're going to say that is moving is equal to true because when we found a target to move to what we're going to do is we're going to say that is moving is true so we then can't then recheck for another random target to move to so sorry if I'm going over the same bits but I'm trying to reiterate the ways of we're making sure that we're not looking for another target when we're already moving so within here within the update not within any um, if statements because we want to do this all the time we want to say transform dot position equals vector 3 dot move towards open brackets transform dot position comma new target dot position comma speed times by time dot delta time close that up add a semicolon so what this means is that we're going to um, transform the position of the object that we're going to put this on so we're going to put this on the fish we're going to set it to move towards um, the position so from our starting position to our new targets position which we're going to set at five times by the time at which the game's running so it's going to force it to move in a particular direction towards the destination that we've set from the random target that we've found so now we need to be able to check that once it's got to its destination we want it to find a new target to then move to again so then if transform dot position is equal to with two equals new target dot position close that up and we'll add two curly brackets below then we'll say that is moving is equal to false with a semicolon so again I'll quickly go through this is that if the cube isn't moving if the boolean is false which it starts off as it'll find a new target between what we've set then it'll set is moving is true so we won't be able to do that 
if statement again then here it will always be moving in a particular direction with one where we set its destination if the actual beginning position then finds itself at the end position of which we've set then we'll say that is moving is true so it will then find itself a new target so we're just getting some random bits of ai in a way but very very basically so we'll add our fish movement to our actual fish object then we'll in the target we'll click the drop down and depending on how many destinations we've got we'll put four into the inspector and we'll have got a, a few element slots now what we're going to do is add destination one and you can click the little the little find arrow at the side and it will let us find each of our game objects you can also drag them in from here over to the inspector but for now that's okay now if we test it out it's not on maximize on play you'll notice that if I look at the object you'll see that the fish moves between the objects randomly it'll randomly choose which object to go to it might go to the same one twice it might stick at the same object itself but it will always move between a random object depending on what it decides to find so obviously it'll be more random if you've actually got more destinations to move to but again this is just very simple and this is just a case to show you that yeah we can get something moved between in as many points as we want but it might take some customization on your part to make it look more realistic but from there we've got the simple movement you can make the speed slower if you don't want it as quick what we need to do is we want to make sure that we can walk up to the fish whatever we want to do and pick it up or collect it catch it whatever so this is not going to be very complicated again like i said i might do a tutorial where you use a spear and we might soup up the script almost and make it more survival based but imagine it you're going to catch it with your hands when you get close so on our main camera we've got a script called raycast collect and raycast collect is how we actually collect all our different objects with within everything that we need to do so what i'm going to do here is like my other ones here that i've got if we hit the game tag um, coconut we're going to be able to pick that up what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that entire statement again so it's if hit.collider game object dot tag is equal to coconut what we're going to do is we're going to paste that slightly below there and what we're going to do instead of coconut we're going to say fish this time so if we've hit hit the collider and the game object tag equals fish we're going to show the gui which is going to say pick up if we press e we're going to then be able to collect the item and we're going to say infantry dot fish because that's the name of the variable that holds the fish within there and then what we need to do is make sure we destroy the fish or the object that we're looking for and then we turn the GUI off now if you need to look at what the variable for the fish had been called if you go onto the first person controller or look at the scripts that I provided on my website is that the infantry script if I open it up in modern develop you'll notice that at the top we've got a public variable fish so that's all we needed to reference to so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure on my fish it's tagged as fish and we've got a box collider on it so what we're gonna do is maybe I'll make my fish move slightly slower so I can keep up with it and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play the game we're gonna see it and we're going to be able to go because this is not full screen it's a little bit weird we can press E and we catch the fish now if we look at our inventory we've got one fish which we didn't have before now if I play it again to show you that we've got zero fish and then it will always do that in particular now what you can actually do is with all these destinations what you can do is you can delete the box collider off them because you don't need them to be um, to be coll collisions and what you can do is also delete the mesh renderer so you can't end up seeing them so really they're not going to render very much in terms of the game so you can see that you've got 
something that you don't see its destinations moving to. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it's not the best thing ever, but it shows that you can get something that works like, I suppose, a random fish would move, but actually has it so you can make whatever you want within the future. So you can take this to an advanced level if you really want. But this is that's just a basic way. And hopefully in the next videos I'll show you how to do, maybe look into more advanced stuff, maybe look into swapping weapons. But one thing I did want to do is that say we've collected some fish like this, we're going to be able to open up a new sort of menu or GUI when we look at a crafted fire. And we're going to be able to cook the fish or do whatever we need to do, boil some water for instance. So again, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.